There is none like your King of glory. We exalt your name, the over Shalom. We call upon you. We worship. We worship. We worship, Lord. We worship, Lord. We worship your King of glory. We worship your Father. Father.
Mungu amelichagua ni kuweza kuelekea jambo. I hope all of you are expecting from him. Natumai wote mnangoja tu kwake. I welcome you all in service and in the world. Na ukarishe wote kwa ibada na kwa neno. Na our topic of today na neno letu kwa siku ya leo. It's about a believer as a king. Na juu ya mumini kama mfalme. Apiniva asaki. Mumini kama mfalme. So, as when we look in the Bible from the book of Genesis, na kwa mleko Biblia kitabu cha mwanzo, God created Adam and Eve, Mungu alimumba Adam na Eve, and he gave authority to Adam, akoto, tena mlaka Adam, to take care of everything in the world weza kulinda kila kitu duniani on earth duniani na maanisha yeah then from that moment the enemy liked to live wakati huo adui alitanganya hawa then he took the authority from the human being na akaweza kuchukua mamlaka kutoka kwa mwanadamu he gave it to himself akaweza kujipea mwenyewe he has been ruling us amekuwa kitu tawala he has been controlling us amekuwa kitu eongoza he has been the king amekuwa mfalme he has been bringing even so many diseases sicknesses into our lives controlling everything that we do in our lives amekuwa kileta magonjwa mambo mengi katika maisha yetu but today lakini siku ya leo there is good news kuna ujumbe mpya There is good news to know that we are the kings again. Kuna ujumbe mzuri kujua kwamba sisi ni wafalme tena. Thank you so much. Ah uh, ninawashukuru sana wote na karibuni katika ibada ya siku ya leo tena nitakuwakaribisha kwa mara ya pili. Mjumbe wetu ni mumini kama mfalme. Azil abiliba zaki mumini kama mfalme. Na tunaona ya kwamba mumini ni mtu anayeamini someone who believes in the existence of gods. Mtu anayeamini katika uwepo kwa Mungu ama mtu anayeamini katika kitu chochote. And katika neno letu la siku ya leo, muumini ni mtoto wa Mungu sisi sons of God. Watoto wa Mungu sisi tunaoamini katika Mungu. Um, na tunaona kwamba mfalme ni mtu ambaye amepewa mamlaka ya kutawala. Kwa mfano katika nchi yetu ya Kenya tuko na president ambaye anatawala nchi yote kwa ujumla katika kaunti tuko na governors wanaongoza katika kaunti tofauti tofauti katika village kuna village elder wanatawala katika vijiji azini mtu ambaye amepewa mamlaka wa kutawala kitu fulani hapo kanisani tuko na mchungaji amepewa mamlaka ya kutawala mali hapa ana uwezo wa kuchagua mtu ana uwezo wa kusema huyu amondoe mamlaka ni hapo na uwezo ni mtu ambaye amepewa mamlaka kutawala katika kanisa. Then tunaona kwamba Mungu alitufanya wafalme miaka 2012 iliyopita. Na sio kwamba ni ahadi. Hajatuahidi kwamba atatufanya kuwa wafalme, lakini kwa kumtuma Yesu Kristo miaka 2012 iliyopita, Yesu akaja akafa msalabani, akaweza kutuletea mamlaka akaweza kutufanya kwa wafalme tena. Ya kwamba vile umekaa hapo hivi Mungu anapona mfalme akiwa amekaa. Mungu anamtazama mfalme akiwa anatembea duniani. Hakuoni tu kama wewe kwa jina lako, anapona kama mtu ambaye alichukua mamlaka kutoka kwa shetani miaka 2012 iliyopita ambayo shetani alikuwa ameyachukua akitutawala, akakupa wewe tena. Na Mungu anapokutazama anapoona mfalme ukiwa umeketi anapotazama duniani anaona mwanawe anaona mfalme akitembea katika ulimwengu. Na ufalme wa Mungu ni ufalme wa kiroho. Ni ufalme ambao sisi tunatawala kwa maneno. 
ngiposa inahitajika ya kwamba katika kila neno unalolitamka wewe kama mfalme you have to be careful with what you speak ukijua kwamba kile unalolitamka linaumba maneno katika ulimwengu wa kiroho na kuyaleta katika ulimwengu wako wa kimwili ukaweze kutawala ni sisi tunatamka azim katika ufalme wa sasa hivi president Uhuru Kenyatta yeye anatawala katika ufalme wa kimwili tunamwona kwamba yeye ni mfalme nini nini anatawala lakini kwetu sisi wewe ni mfalme na pia wewe vile uko hivyo uko na ufalme wako ambao unatawala na unatawala kwa maneno sio kwamba kuna siku ambayo utachukuliwa upeleke upeleke state house ukiachishwa huko kama mfalme wakaweza wakaweza kukufisha taji wakatangaza kwamba huyu ni mfalme wetu lakini wewe ni mfalme unatawala katika kiroho na ukitaka kujua kwamba wewe ni mfalme simama ukaweza kufika kanisani uje na sadaka yako ukaweza kuomba kwa sababu ya kitu unachohitaji kifanyike katika ulimwengu huu na utaona kama hakitafanyika kumaanisha kwamba wewe ni mfalme una mamlaka una nguvu unatawala you can declare anything and it will come to be yes then kama mfalme umepewa jukumu na Mungu kutumia mamlaka juu ya shetani na nguvu za giza Mungu anapotazama duniani ana expect ya kwamba hataki kuona ukilialia ukisema maybe shida inakukumba nini kitu kinakusumbua umepewa mamlaka you have the authority ya kufanya mambo hayo ambayo hauhitaji yakawepo ukaweza kuyabadilisha umepewa jukumu na Mungu ya kwamba popote unapopita upate kuna mtu ni mgonjwa Mungu amekupa jukumu hilo wewe ukaweza kutamka uponyaji katika maisha ya huyo mtu amekupa jukumu ya kwamba ukaweza kutangaza kamani katika nchi ya Kenya kwa mfano tunapoelekea katika katika uchaguzi mkuu mwaka mwaka huu mwezi wa nane Mungu anatarajia kwamba kusikuwepo na vita wanasiasa wanapanga vita huyu anapanga atapiga wa huyu hao anapanga watachoma hawa hao anapanga watakongoa nyumba za wengine lakini Mungu anatarajia kwamba wewe katika ufalme wako usimame na utangaze katika jina la Yesu ya kwamba amani iwepo duniani na amani itakuwa Usimame kutangaza ya kwamba hakuna vita, hakuna kiongozi atakaye kenda kinyume na mapenzi ya Mungu na litafanyika hivyo. Jinsi Mungu ameweza kukupa mamlaka. Sio sisi tulio msihi Mungu ya kwamba akatufanya wafalme, bali lilikuwa wazo la Mungu tangu mwanzo. Aliwaza ya kwamba wanadamu akaweze kutawala katika ulimwengu. Haikuwa wazo lako kwamba wewe ukaweze kutawala. Kwa hivyo hauhitaji kuogopa lolote, unahitaji kusimama ukaweza kutangaza katika jina la Yesu na Mungu ataweza kutenda katika maisha yetu. Neno lako linaandamana na nguvu za kubadilisha hali yoyote isiyofaa. Tunapotazama katika kitabu cha Mhubiri 8:4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. Kama sumiza pata hapo Tunaweza kusoma mpaka kwenye tafadhali kwa sababu mbalimbali. Asisi sasa sisi 
mimi na wewe wewe ambaye umegeti hapo kuna sababu tofauti tofauti azinzina tofanya tusiweze kuishi kama wafalme sisi sababu ya kwanza ni kutofahamu ili tunaona katika kitabu cha waefeso moja mstari wa tatu Waefeso moja mstari wa tatu tukaweza kusoma pamoja na tafadhali ametubariki na baraka zote za kiroho zote hapo wanasema zote hawakusema waliacha ile siku fisi yako hawakusema waliacha ile nguo yako zote baraka zote za rohoni and as i say it is a spiritual a spiritual world tunatawala katika ulimwengu wa kiroho kwa hivyo aliyetubariki na baraka zote za rohoni katika ulimwengu wa roho ndani ya Kristo Mungu ametubariki na baraka zote katika ulimwengu wetu wa kiroho. Kila kitu ambacho unakihitaji, ulishafikiriwa kitambo kabla hata hujazaliwa. Mungu alishakubariki kila kitu ambacho unahitaji. Kila ambacho wewe unalia unasema kwamba hebu viatu nini, zote ulishabarikiwa. Lakini tatizo ni kwamba hatufahamu. Ni kwa sababu ya kutokufahamu ya kwamba ulimwengu wa kiroho umiliki ulimwengu wa kimwili ulimwengu wa kiroho the spiritual world rules and controls the physical life amen ulimwengu wako wa kiroho umeshakirimiwa kila kitu unapohitaji fedha zako unaingia katika ulimwengu wa kiroho unatamka ya kwamba fedha na dhahabu ni vyako fedha na dhahabu ni mali ya baba yako nawe ni mrithi pamoja na Mungu amen. na vyote hivyo vinaletwa katika ulimwengu wa kimwili Uwezi kutangaza katika ulimwengu wa kimwili unaingia rohoni na kutangaza na hilo ni tatizo ambalo wanadamu wengi wa Kristo wengi hatujafahamu na hatujaishi kama wafalme kwa sababu ya kutokufahamu na sababu nyingine ni ujanga wa kiroho Hapo tunapata katika kitabu cha Wagalatia 4:1 Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 Tukaweza kusoma please Ujanga wa kiroho unatufanya sisi tukaweze kuishi kama watumwa kwa sababu hatujielewi kama ujijui ya kwamba wewe ni mfalme azinukuja kuwa kiroho katika ulimwengu wako wa kiroho unafaa kutawala huko ndipo sasa ukaweze kuleta mamlaka yako ikaonekane physically na kama katika ulimwengu wa kiroho wewe bado ni mchanga haufahamu wewe ni mtoto utazidi kuteseka kama Biblia inavyosema kwamba mtoto akiwa mchanga na ni mfalme yani mtoto wa mfalme kwa sababu kwa mfano tuseme mtoto wa president huru Kenyatta akizaliwa kwa sasa hivi amalize kama miaka miwili ama mitatu kuna mtu anaweza hata kumtesa kuna mtu anaweza kumpitisha katika mateso mbalimbali lakini anateseka katika nyumba ya baba yake kwa sababu hana ufahamu haelewi yeye bado ni mchanga akisha kuwa mkubwa ndipo atafahamu ya kwamba hivi vitu vyote ni vya baba yake lakini kama bado angali mchanga atateseka ndivyo hivyo inavyodhihirika katika maisha yetu kama wakristo tunavyoishi siku siku hizi ni kwamba tuko wachanga katika kiroho hatufahamu tunateseka unapita katika magonjwa lakini hujui ufanye nini unapita katika magonjwa mbalimbali yanakufinya uende hospitali ulazwe mtoto wako huku ni mgonjwa wazazi wako ni wagonjwa unateseka kwa sababu bado ungali mchanga haufahamu ya kwamba una mamlaka ufahamu ya kwamba una uwezo wa kusimama ukatangaze uzima ukatangaze uponyaji katika maisha yako ukaweze kuwepo kwa hivyo tunahitaji kukua we need to grow spiritually amen then tukaweza kutazama sifa za mfalme na kwamba mfalme apigiwe kura kuingia uongozini 
tunalipata hilo katika kitabu cha Ufunuo moja tano hadi sita Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 Tusome pamoja tafadhali
kila wakati unapotembea ukitangaza wewe ni maskini umeshindwa magonjwa magonjwa haya yangu sijui nitafanya je hayo huu maskini wetu umeshika familia yetu sana hicho ndicho kitakachofanyika unaunda sheria ambayo inaingia katika maisha yako na kutawala katika maisha yako unaumba sheria pia ya unahitaji kuumba sheria ya kuondoa umasikini huo kama unataka kujinasua katika mtego huo ukisha jiingiza mwenyewe ndani tena Mungu anasema kwamba amekupa uwezo wa kuweza tena kujinasua humo ndani ni maneno yako neno lako ni sheria ndipo sasa tunahitaji kuchunga kila kitu tunachokizungumza wa Kristo azim wafalme ambao wameokoka na wanaketi kanisani na kutusi watoto wao na kufanya fitina unaona kwa maneno yako yanaenda huko nje kuathiri watu wengi sana yale unaye yasema yanatendeka yale unaye yatabiri yanafanyika neno lako ni sheria what you speak is law Niposa unahitaji sana ku, 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 kupeleka maneno yako yakaweze kulingana na Biblia. Ukaweze kulingana na Mungu katika neno lako. Kile unachokisema kikaweze ku, kufuatana na neno la Mungu. Kwa sababu unachokisema Mungu hajawahi sema kwamba anakuazia mabaya. Kila kilichoandikwa katika Biblia, kila ahadi iliyo katika Biblia ni ahadi njema. Unahitaji kila wakati kutamka maneno la Mungu ukiweza kulitabiri juu ya maisha yako na hilo litaweza kufanyika Una, unafaa kila wakati kupinga mambo ambayo hayafai hayafai katika maisha yako kuyapinga na kuyakanusha unakataa unasema kwamba umasikini sio sehemu yangu unakataa na itatii maneno yako kama vile biblia inasema kwamba tumkatai shetani tumpinge naye atatutoroka you have to speak with your mouth una create yale unayotaka yakaweze kuwa katika maisha yako. Unatamka maneno katika maisha ya watoto wako. Unahitaji watoto wako wafanikiwe. You speak in their lives. Lakini unapomtusi mtoto mjinga, mpumba mtoto wako akianza kuwa mjinga tena unaanza kukwenda kwa Mungu. Kulia ukianza kusema Mungu, mtoto wako alifanyaje? Uanze tena kuwasingizia majirani ya kwamba wameroga mtoto na ni wewe mwenyewe. Umeweza kuunda sheria kwa maisha ya mtoto wako ya kwamba awe mpumbavu na atakuwa tu mpumbavu mpaka vile utakavyoamka usimame ujue kwamba neno lako ni sheria ukaweza kukanusha yale maneno uliyoyasema katika maisha ya mtoto wako ataweza tena kusimama tukuweze kuona kwamba sifa nyingine tena kwamba mfalme anamiliki kila kitu kilicho chini ya miliki yake katika kitabu cha Zaburi ya 1:15 na 16 inasema kwamba vitu vyote duniani viliungwa kwa ajili yetu Mbingu ni za Mungu. Mungu aliumba mbingu ziwe zake. Dunia iwe ya mwanadamu. Sisi tukaweze kutawala hapa duniani. Aliweza kutupa mamlaka na uwezo ya kwamba tukamiliki kila kitu kilicho chini ya miguu yetu. Jinsi tu nilivyokuambia kwamba mfalme ha, hana kitu ambacho kinamwepusha wanasema kwamba hiki hawezi kukitawala. Anatawala kila kitu kilicho chini ya miliki yake. Anatawala kila kitu kilicho chini ya eneo lake. Ndivyo hivyo na wewe pia ulivyo. Uko na nguvu na uwezo wa kutawala kila kitu kilicho chini yako. Kilicho duniani, kilicho katika maisha yako. Umepewa huo uwezo wa kukitawala. Then sifa nyingine ni kwamba uwepo wa mfalme ni uwepo wa mamlaka yake. Your presence is the presence of your authority. Popote unapopita wewe mamlaka yako yanaonekana. Mamlaka yako watu wakaweza kufeel mamlaka yako. Popote unapopita mahali ambapo hapana 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 amani. Unapofika hapo uwepo wako unafaa kuilete amani mahali pale. Tukumbeze kuona tu kwa mfano um, tuseme <laughs> Tuseme rais wetu saizi apige hapa simu apigie mchungaji simu asema anataka kuja kushiriki hapa kwa wakati huu. Alafu apite huko kwa kituo cha huko kwa kunya pombe. Akunya pombe alewe. Aanze kuzungumza ni kama mtu haeleweki. Aje aketi hapa kanisani hapa mbele. Ametembea na authority yake. Kuna kitu kinaitwa the president and the presidency azimu yeye mwenyewe 
Stop dressing in here. Voice name, please. Rice. 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 As in, then mamlaka yake, urais, ye na mamlaka yake, ametendea na mamlaka yake. So, akija kuketi hapa, ameketi yeye pamoja na ofisi yake. Mukimona kwamba yeye amelewa, hata na izakuwa tuwa na lala, amewadarao, amelala tu, tumtazami. Then, amuke tu maramonya na sima kwamba atangazi. Ya kwamba viongozi wawote katika hili kanisa, waende kamiti maximum prison, wafungwe. Hakuna mtu atapinga mta mtarau yeye kwamba amelewa lakini kit ofisi yake imesema mtaheshimu ofisi yake ndio ajielewe but hata ni wanyao mtaona tu mmepigwa mmepelekwa huko uwepo wako unaandamana na mamlaka yako kwa mfano giza linapoondoka mwangaza unaingia hakuna mtu anaye hakuna vile giza litasema ama ni subiri subiri kidogo Mwangaza ufike katikati nitaondoka. Hapana. Unapofika mahali popote um, kwa mfano wewe ukiingia huku upate mtu amepagawa hapa na pepo. Amuweze kukaa katika kiti kimoja, mkaweza kutaza azi yeye mtu wa, wa pepo, akuone wewe kiroho na wewe kumuone. Ana hata anaweza kuwa anafunga ibada hapa. Anashikilia ibada tunaomba maombi hayaendi mbele. Tunatangaza kitu akifanyiki. Inahitajika kwamba uwepo wako unapoonekana katika huo mlango. Na hili pepo likaweza kutii. Likasimame, likaweza kuondoka. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu anavyohitaji wewe uwe. Anapokutazama katika ulimwengu. Unapoketi hapa, usiketi na pepo. Pepo lisitawale mahali ambapo umeketi. Shetani asitawale mahali ambapo upo. Shida isikuwe mahali ambapo wewe umeketi. Ukaweza kuwa na utofauti. Mungu anapokutazama, hakuoni tu wewe kama wewe. Anakuona wewe kama mtu ambaye amekupa uwezo. Inamhuzunisha Mungu sana wakati anaona watoto wake anaoona kama wafalme, wanalia, wanateseka, wamekunjana. Hawana hawana cha kufanya. Inamhuzunisha Mungu. Hafurahi. Dhirisha kwa njia ya kipekee. Mwana mpata? Yes. Asante. Tukaweze kutazama King's Lifestyle. Kutisuwe? Manjitino. Lifestyle. Ha? Mtino wa kifalme. Mtino wa kifalme. Azi, mtino wako, yani, wa lifestyle. Kwa unaitati kuhishi. Lifestyle yako wewe kama mfalme. Mtino wako, jinsi unabiaweza kuhishi kama mfalme. Tunama kwamba, Tunapoishi katika ulimwengu huu tunahitaji kuwa watu wapeanaji watu agiva mtu wa kutoa katika madhabahu ya Mungu Tunao madhabahu haya yaliweza kuwekwa mahali hapa yakaweze kuleta suluhisho katika maisha yetu na wewe kama kama mfalme au unahitaji kutembea katika shida yoyote maana umeumbiwa madhabahu haya yakaweze kuleta suluhisho katika watu wa mji huu wa maseno wakaweze kukimbilia madhabahu hayo wakapokea uponyaji wa maisha yao na hapa pia ni sehemu ya watu wa maseno unahitaji madhabahu haya yameumbiwa wewe uko na haki ya kuja hapa kutangaza kwamba madhabahu yakaweza kuachilia baraka zako unazozihitaji unakuja hapa uko mgonjwa unakuja kulilia hapa ukaweza kupokea uponyaji Unakuja mahali hapa ukiwa hauna kazi, unatafuta kazi. Unalilia katika madhabahu haya, ukaweza kupokea kazi. Ndio tunakubali. Lakini madhabahu acha kuna 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 msemo unasema mkono mtupu haulangi. Wewe hutaki kutoa. Hata sidhani kama kuna madhabahu ya ya waganga na wachawi ambapo kuna mtu anaenda tu kulilia huko anasema jamani mganga nisaidie mimi nataka hata uwe huyo mama ambaye anasukua mtoto wangu nini nini uweze kulia mganga akusaidie you have to give something hata katika madhabahu haya ndiko yakuweza kunena katika maisha yako you need to give sisi uja hapa kuomba tunakuja kulia tunafunga tunaomba we fast Mungu kumbuka familia zetu kumbuka watoto wetu lakini hutaki kutoa Madhabahu haya 
kuita nena pia mtu atakwangalia na sema eh na mtoto wangu analia tu kila siku analia tena kiko na kesho anakuja kulia yeye anakuangalia tu unaendelea kulia madhabahu yatanenaje kujatoa anything hapo hivyo tunaweza kupata pia neno in second kings chapter 3 verse 26 to 27 wafanye wa pili tatu
atangaze ya kwamba Mungu akaweza kukumbuka maisha yake, akaweza kukumbuka watoto wake, akakumbuke ndoa yake. Alafu ama tuseme hapo tunahitaji moja. Anahitaji akaweze ku Tuseme anahitaji akaweze kujenga nyumba. Anataka kujenga gorofa. Ah achukue mshahara wake wa miezi minne ama mitano. Aje mahali hapa afast na achukue hiyo dhabihu apeane kwa mchungaji asema kwamba nimetoa kwa sababu ya project tuliyo nayo kanisani ninataka Mungu akanikumbuke kwangu ninataka kujenga nyumba na kuna mwingine anapata 100,000 per month anachukua 1200 alete kanisani akuja aombe aliye aliye amalize achukue 20,000 alete kanisani na nasema kwamba Mungu pia mimi kumbuka nyumba yangu ninataka kujenga gorofa hata kama wewe ni Mungu utaangalia mgani <laughs> Tuseme zale tu hata kama wewe ni Mungu ule wa 20k ama kwenye ni sacrifice mshahara plus chakula ya watoto range akauza kuji sacrifice ili atoe kwa mradi wa Mungu hata kama wewe ni Mungu utakumbuka pia mwenye ni sacrifice yake yote si kule mwenye anatoa out of his comfort zone anatoa zile hizi za juu ah hizi wacha nipeleke tusi wanataka alete hata kama wewe ni Mungu utamwangalia bila mwingine hiyo ndio inaitwa sacrifice Awa maisha yetu na kila kitu chetu tulichanacho we need to sacrifice for it hata masomo ya watoto wako unajua sometimes nilisema Mungu anaangalia duniani anasema eh na watoto wangu Mtu ameweza kujifungua mtoto. Anachukua sabuni ya kibuyu, vipande viwili, sukari kilo mbili, majani, analeta anakuja kuleta nayo mtoto wa kanisani, wamwombea mtoto, wamdedicate kwa Mungu. Mwenye mtoto Mungu anakuangalia. Kwa mtu mtoto hapo tu wati sabuni, sukari na majani peke yake. Yaani kote unamwona mtoto wako. Tunahitaji kukuwa serious kama wa Kristo kama wafalme unataka kuishi maisha ya kifalme hutaki kujisacrifice you want to give kile chenye unaona kwamba acha nipeane tu hiki acha Mungu anaelewa Mungu aelewi Mungu anataka ukue serious na mambo yako akue serious akuja kwako kushughulikia kwako anahitaji unapomleta mtoto kanisani unataka kwamba mtoto wako aende asome vizuri shuleni unapompeleka mtoto shule uwezi jua vila atasoma uwezi jua hiyo shule inakaaje you have to sacrifice for your child Una, unafaa kumtolea mtoto dhabihu kanisani katika madhabahu akienda shuleni hata wakati kunakuwa na watoto wa Illuminati huko watoto wabaya wabaya wanaweza ku, kuharibu watoto mimi kuna shetani ameinuka kwa sababu ya hiyo shule watoto wame, wameondoka wameenda tua na kuna watoto wengine wanafaa kukufa huko wako hatapatikana kwa hao wenye wanakufa madhabahu yatamdai madhabahu yatamuondoa huko kwa kifo kwa list ambayo amewekwa yatamrudisha mtoto wako hawezi kukufa kwa sababu ume sacrifice kwa sababu yake you give for your child you sacrifice for your child hivyo ndivyo tunahitaji kutoa kwa kila kitu unahitaji kuishi maisha mazuri pia Mungu kitu madhabahu hali kanene hicho kitu katika maisha yako kila kitu unachokihitaji you have to give for it ndoa yako unataka ikuwe mzuri lakini hutaki ku sacrifice kwa sababu yake unasema kwamba mke wako anakusumbua sijui nini unahitaji tu kudabihu leta hapa tangazia madhabahu haya yakaweza kumbadilisha Mungu Mungu atambadilisha lakini ukikuja tu free unalia unaweza nyo kuanzia asubuhi mpaka jioni na hakuna majibu utapata Unaweza kukimbia hapa uzunguke ufike huko ukirudi na bado you need to give to the altar ndio izungumze katika maisha yako. Tunaona kwamba katika your lifestyle tena tunaona kitabu cha Matthew chapter 17 verse 16 to 21. Mfalme unahitaji kuwa mtu mwombezi. Maombi, maombi yanasaidia sana. Maombi yanasaidia pakubwa. Matthew Matayo 
221. 221. Chapter 17, verse 16 to 20. kuna vitu vingine kuna vitu vingine vitaondoka kwa dhabihu kuna laana zingine matatizo mengine yataondoka kwa dhabihu unapotupeana kama na bao yataondoka lakini kuna mengine Yesu anasema inahitaji maombi na tena ni maombi ya kufunga na kuomba kuna wafalme wengine wanahitaji kuishi kama wafalme na hawataki kuomba unataka utoe dhabihu ndio unatoa sadaka lakini sasa kama utaki kuomba bado Yesu anasema kwamba kuna mambo mengine yataondoka kwa maombi ya kufunga na kuomba We need to be prayerful Kama mfalme your lifestyle you should be prayerful Unafaa kuwa mtu wa kuomba sana Unaenda unatoa dhabihu unaomba unaenda mlimani Kwa kuna watu mwaka umezaanza uishe uanze uishe uanze uishe hajai kanyaka mlimani yani hajai enda maombi ya kufunga na bado anajiita tu mfalme sijasema ni wewe lakini nasema kuna mtu kuna mfalme anataka kuishi kama mfalme lakini yeye na maombi hawavutani hawapelekani hawaendani you need to be prayerful unahitaji kuwa muombezi sana kuna mambo mengine katika maisha Unahitaji kuyavunja kwa maombi. Unahitaji kuyaharibu kwa maombi. Kuna nira zingine zimefunga maisha yako. Unahitaji tu kwenda mlimani. Uwe na uwe na wakati mzuri na Mungu. Utangaze katika maisha yako. Pia tunapotazama ni kwamba your lifestyle jambo lingine ni kwamba unahitaji kuwa mtu wa kusoma neno la Mungu. A king, you should know the word of God. Kwa sababu Unahitaji kufanana na Mungu kwa neno lake. Unahitaji kutawala kwa maneno. Sasa utatawala kwa maneno gani kama sio Biblia? Unahitaji kujua Mungu anahitaji nini katika maisha yako? Ukakitangaze. Mungu ameahidi nini kwa maisha yako? Ukatangaze. Mungu anasema nini? Yale ndiyo unayohitaji kuyatangaza. Ukienda huko kwa maombi, hautaweza kuomba out of the Bible. You need to pray the Bible. You need to pray according to the word of God. Na Mungu anasema kwamba yeye analitii neno lake kuliko hata jina lake. Yeye unayoyasema anasema kwamba neno lake haliwezi kuje duniani likamrudie bure. Anasema kwamba unahitaji kuomba neno lake. Unahitaji kuomba according to his word. You have to speak. Unahitaji kutamka neno. Unahitaji kutangaza jinsi Mungu anavyosema kuhusu maisha yako anavyosema kuhusu watoto wako anavyosema kuhusu ndoa yako yote yanapatikana katika Biblia unahitaji kuomba ukitangaza ukitangaza Biblia ukitangaza neno la Mungu uweze kutamka maneno yako unafaa kutamka jinsi Mungu anavyosema unasema kama Mungu ninasimama katika neno lako unalosema katika kitabu cha Isaia chapter 54 verse 17 nina hukumu ndimi zote ambazo zimenena kinyume na maisha yangu ya kwamba sitafanikiwa maana Mungu amesema kwamba mimi nimefanikiwa mimi ni mimi ni mridhi wako nina ridhi haya na Mungu ataweza kukutendea lakini kama hujui kila kitabu cha Isaia hata hujui utasema nini 
na Mungu hataweza kujibu kitu ambacho hajasema. Atajibu kile amesema kwamba atafanya. Kwa hivyo ni jukumu langu na wewe tukaweze kusimama kama wafalme. Kwa sababu leo hii umejua, unajua authority ulio nayo. Uko na nguvu, tunahitaji kusimama, tukaweze kutangaza kwa sababu ya maovu yote ambayo yanaweza kuinuka. Vitu vizuri vyote vinaweza kuhusishwa na shetani. Ukiona mwimbaji mzuri wa gospel unaambiwa ako Illuminati. Ukisikia yote anayeinuka mwandishi mzuri ako Illuminati. Yaani vitu vyote vizuri vimehusishwa na shetani. Inamaanisha shetani ame take over wakati mimi na wewe tumekaa. Tunamtazama akitawala. Inahitaji ijulikane na kwamba huyu dada mwimbaji mzuri ameokoka ni mtu anayemjua Mungu. Huo ndio ufalme wa Mungu. Huo ndio kutawala kwa Mungu. Lakini haihitaji jinsi sisi tunavyoendelea kwa sasa hivi. Vitu vizuri vyote vimehusishwa na shetani kwa sababu sisi tumelala. Sisi kama Wakristo, sisi kama waumini, wafalme hatuchukui nafasi yetu kuweza kusimama na kutangaza yale ambayo Mungu anahitaji tukaweze kutangaza katika maisha yetu. Niwashukuru sana kwa kunisikiza na kwa kuelewa pia. Najua kwamba kuna vile tumekosana kidogo lakini utanisa mengi. Na washukuru sana Mungu akaweze kuwabariki. Somebody say hallelujah. Sema wow. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mimi ni mfalme. <laughs> Did you hear the word today? Yeah. Ulisikia neno la Mungu siku ya leo? Sema mimi ni mfalme. Mimi ni mfalme. Siwezi shindwa. Nitaomba. Nitatoa dhabihu. Maana mimi ni mfalme. Praise and worship ujeni hapa tutangaze ufalme katika kila mtu ambaye yuko hapa. Kila mtu angalia pale chini na tusome pamoja kwa nguvu, kwa nguvu alafu tutasimama. Kama tukisimama nataka tusome sisi wote. Nataka nisikie sauti ya kila mtu tunapotangaza. Mwenaji amesema na amesema uwe ni mfalme. Na mfalme ako na mamlaka. Hawezi akashiwa na lolote sema amen. Hakuna silaha <laughs> si wasikita fadhali nataka tukasome tukitangaza katika maisha yetu hilo neno ni muhimu sana alipokuwa akiongea nilikuwa nafikiria sana vifungu fulani ambapo Mungu ametuambia sisi ni washindi na hii imekuwa moja yapo ambayo amemalizia hakuna silaha itakayofanyiwa dhidi yako itakayofanikiwa na hii ndio haki yao usiseme yao sema yangu haleluya tuende sisi sote na hii ndio haki yangu itakayo kwangu asema nani Kwa. sema amen hiyo ndio urithi ambao Mungu ametutajia tafadhali naomba tukasimame sisi wote tunapomshangilia mnenaji wa asubuhi ya leo pigie tu makofi kwa leo mnenaji wa leo anaposema nataka asubuhi ya leo tunapomalizia ibada hii ya siku ya leo kuna mambo mengi ambayo yanaweza kuwa yamekuwa kusonga na kukuweka chini Kiswahili si mambo chako lakini nitajaribu leo Mungu anasema wewe ni mfalme wewe ni mfalme ulimwenguni huu Hakuna lolote ambalo Mungu alijiweka hapa duniani ambalo linaweza likakushinda. Katika kitabu cha Romans Warumi nane mlango ni wa nane Mlango ni wa nane tunaliuse tusome kwa Kiingereza tafadhali. The Bible says And we know that in all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. To them who are called according to his purpose. I will jump to verse 31. And what shall we say to these things? If God is for us all, who can
can be against us. Allow me jump to verse 37. Now, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Praise the Lord. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Just go to verse 37 to Father. 37. I want us to read that. As we declare, and this morning we are declaring everything according to that scripture this morning, that nothing is going to go against us because we are the king's sons. In all these things, allow me to think that we are more than conquerors. If people come before me, we are more than conquerors. The Bible continues and says, through him who loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, who is our interpreter this morning? Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor any power, nor things present, to believe you, or things which are to come, no heights, no heights, no heights, whatever, no death, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Lift up your head and say, I'm more than a conqueror. No demonic power shall be against me. No sickness shall overpower me. Because I am more than a conqueror. This morning I declare that I am mighty. I am a king. I am a son of God. I am victorious. I am powerful. In the name of Jesus, somebody open up your voice and declare those words that you are great and you are powerful, that nothing shall ever come against you. Open up your voice and declare the words of the Lord this morning, that you are more than a conqueror, that you are my king. Nothing shall come against you. You are greater than you are. You are mightier than you are. You are able to do abundantly and exceedingly what no man can ever imagine because you are great. Somebody open up your voice and declare your life. Declare greatness in your life. Declare victory in your life. Declare victory in your house. Somebody is holding us out to me. Don't just be silent. Open up your voice. That the Lord may hear you. Break any chain. Break any principalities. That this body, nobody is doing anything in the name of Jesus. You are a king in the name of Jesus. We bless you all, God. In the mind of Jesus, we can be blessed. We are the mind of God. In the mind of Jesus. Of the mighty. Who is this mighty? And there is no other beautiful being that God made apart from a human being. Because I was contemplating through this scripture, I realized that I am the mighty person that God is sitting with me. And even as we are here this morning, our God is standing in this congregation because we are mighty. And he judges among the gods. Chapter verse 6. The Bible says, and I have said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the most high God. As the speaker was speaking here, I realized that I am not a nobody. I am not a useless being. I am a 
a son of God. I am mighty. I am a son of the most high God. I can declare and speak anything in my life and it happens. I can speak life into somebody who is very sick. I can speak redemption into somebody who has been demon possessed. I can speak healing to anybody who is down. I can speak hope to my family who is down. I can speak success in my academics. Somebody lift up my voice and say, God, do it unto me. God, do it unto me this morning. Because I am mighty. Because I am mighty. Everybody repeat after me. Lord, do it unto me. Because I am mighty. Somebody is not speaking with me. God, do it unto me. God, do it unto me. Because I am mighty. Because I am your son.
you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, thank you and bless you this day. You are the prayers of Father that you have made us kings. We bless your name, O Father. Because of the sacrifice that was given on the cross, we have been lifted up from bondages, from limitations, from barriers. Father God, we have been lifted up from curses. Oh Lord, we thank you and we bless you. Father God, you have lifted us up, O oh God. Thank you, Father, because your name, name pierced us. I've raised us up. Father, you have raised us up. I thank you, Lord, this morning. I thank you, Father, because you are raising somebody up. I thank you, Father, because you are lifting somebody up. The word says, Oh, Father, Lord, that when Peter and John went into prayer, they saw the man sitting at the gate of beauty. Silver and gold have we not. What we have, we have given you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible says they took his hand and raised him up. And, uh, and his feet became strong. And he went to the temple, making a praise Walking. And this morning, we thank you because in the name of Jesus Christ, you are raising up someone, oh God, who has been downtrodden. You are raising someone up, oh God, who has been discarded. You are raising someone up, oh God, and you are putting a new song in their hearts. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we declare that people rise up. We declare that people are rising up. In the name of Jesus, they are rising up. They are walking. They are lifting up their voice. Praising the Lord. Thank you and we bless you. Father Lord, we thank you. Because every bondage is broken. Every yoke of darkness is broken. Every power of darkness is broken. Every word that was spoken against the Lord is the spirit of condemnation. It is silenced. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. You are a mighty God. Jehovah reign. Jehovah una tawala. Reign, O Father. Tawala e Father. Reign, Jesus. Tawala Yesu. Reign, mighty God. Tawala Father Nko. We thank you and we bless you. Akshukuru na toku bariki. Jesus, let me pray. Kujina la Yesu tume omba. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor and our elders, for blessing us this morning. I want to be our speaker and one of our youths, Maureen. God bless you for that word. We are deep and we are going to be able to help us. We are going to be able to help us. We are going to be able to help us. We are going to be able to help us. We are going to be able to help us. We are going to be able to help us. When you step outside this door this morning, please may you go out as a king. May you go out as a victor. Don't go out bowing down to anybody. But whenever you step, take control of that place. Because the controller of all controls is with you. The king of all kings is with you. Go out with a victor's capability and ability. Because the Lord is God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, allow me request as we are going to give our offering this morning. The youths requested to have some few presentations. 
Kupitia kwa mama mchungaji allow us in the next few minutes to ruhusu kwa dakika chache zifuatazo to have few presentations from our youth department tutakuwa na vitu vya kuleta hapa mbele zenu kutoka kwa department ya vijana i think we have one song from one of our beautiful ladies mercy kutoka kwa dada yetu mercy it should be ready ingekuwa ingekuwa tayari sasa hivi we have a spoken word tuko na neno na kunenwa then finally we have a play na kisha tuna mchezo wa kuigiza. Tunatake almost four minutes each. Kila kitu kitachukua dakika 4. That is what they have prepared for us today. Kicha kicha umetuandalia siku hii ya leo. As they prepare or allow us to be ready with our offerings. Wana kujiandaa tafadhali tujiandae na sadaka zetu. Ah, uh, our ashes place wherever you are.